Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy, a typical security guard. Today we're gonna be doing a quick breakdown of my everyday work rig. Uh, just what I wear on my uh, duty vest, duty belt. A couple people been asking, so we're gonna break it down. We're gonna do this pretty quick. Uh, starting off with the Coast Light. Uh, this is a really cool little light, and I'll tell you guys why we utilize these. Uh, you've got your normal, um, just your normal white setting, and then your red setting. Um, we utilize the white setting when we're uh, patrolling through the parking lot areas. The red setting is actually used when we're standing outside at night at one of the local retail spots that I work at. Uh, anytime that we have a medical uh, assist, this helps to kind of break us up from um, you know the people that are standing around and that way it alerts law enforcement or first responders um, where the issue is. So we have a lot of issues of overdose, um, detainments of people, things like that. And generally a lot of those issues happen um, at night or when it's a little bit darker. So that's what the Coast Light is used for. Those are really inexpensive. I think you can actually get them for about nine uh, somewhere between nine and say 12, 15 bucks on Amazon. Uh, great pickup. And also if you use this in your car on your visor with the red light, really good to um, keep yourself kind of illuminated, uh, but not standing out like a target um, if you're in your, your vehicle. Uh, the second thing is gonna be the Pelican 7600. Uh, this is a great rechargeable flashlight. Uh, generally, if I'm working a double shift, uh, first thing I do when I get to the store plug this bad boy in uh, on a micro C cable um, and then it's ready to go uh, in the evening when we're doing patrols or kind of in the garage area. It's a great flashlight. It's not as expensive as your Surefire or your, um, I believe your Streamlight uh, flashlights. It's a little bit more of a, um, you know, a cheaper version, uh, but I've had it for over a year. It's a very, very good flashlight. Picks up a charge really quickly. Very, very happy with it. Uh, my medical kit. Now, I used to carry a full um, uh, in individual first aid kit that had all types of uh, chest seals, compression bandages, uh, band-aids, almost anything you can think of along with the tourniquets. But over the past like three to four months, I've uh, pared everything down. And the only thing that I carry in this are two Cat7 tourniquets. Okay, just like this. Um, and the reason why you wanna have two tourniquets, number one, if you're in a situation where someone needs a tourniquet, um, you don't wanna to have to apply that tourniquet and then not have one for yourself. Um, again, you can also have a tourniquet that can fail. Um, but uh, also, one of the things that I wanted to point out with the uh, placement of my holder, um, and this is just my personal opinion, I think a lot of people agree with me, um, maybe some of you don't, but you want to make sure that your tourniquet or your uh, individual first aid kit is accessible uh, with either hand, your left or your right. You're not going to be able to predict which arm is going to be out of the fight, so you want to make sure that this is someplace where you can get to it uh, with equal access. Having a zipper that comes down on the right side as well as on the left side and able to just flip this whole thing down and have quick, easy access to that tourniquet, I think it's very important. Also, having your uh, individual first aid kit clearly marked as your medical kit uh, is very important. Most people carry a lot of gear. If you're wearing a tack vest, you have a lot of gear on your vest. Um, and you know, you know, seconds can mean life or death and you want to make sure that people know exactly where your medical kit is if needed. Um, I will be replacing this cause this is, you know, this medical thing here is getting kind of old, uh, moving down, uh, over here, I have a, um, a wedget and this is one of my absolutely most utilized on a daily basis, um, items. This is used to prop open doors. Uh, another thing that we deal with, uh, one of the locations that I work at, again, a lot of overdose, um, a lot of transient, a lot of vagrants, and most of the time they're bedding down or quote unquote camping in our bathrooms. Uh, we have locking bathrooms, we have heavy steel doors, being able to place this wedget 
uh, on those doors to make sure those doors remain open. Don't close behind us. Don't lock behind us in situations where a lot of times people are being hostile, they're being aggressive, they're being angry. Or if someone's in a medical emergency like an overdose, which we've had uh, quite a few of those recently, uh, being able to have that door open and accessible by first responders while you're still tending to the situation, this has been absolutely just invaluable and again very very inexpensive every security guard should have one of these uh eight dollars for one 16 for two on amazon and it gets its very own special pouch right here on my kit and like i said something that i use generally every day uh for my handcuffs i have two um pairs of hinged handcuffs i prefer hinged handcuffs and i'll tell you why and the reason why i have two of these actually kind of bleeds into the same situation. Anytime where uh, I have had to go hands-on and physically detain someone uh, utilizing handcuffs, you do not get to choose which hand is gonna be free and which hand you secure first on the involved person or the subject. Having handcuffs on your right side and your left side gives you the opportunity to be able to quickly deploy those handcuffs. Another reason why I use hinged handcuffs, the ability to grab those and manipulate those and know exactly where they are in time and space um, relative to, to where your hand is in the middle, as opposed to using the uh, chain handcuffs, I prefer that. Uh, also, uh, compliance techniques, I prefer those with the hand handcuff as opposed to the, um, uh, the chain handcuffs. And some people feel differently. Personally, for me, um, the hinge handcuffs are the way to go. And having both pairs in the same place but on opposite sides has been extremely uh, beneficial to me in a situation where, like again, you have to go hands-on and you're only able to secure one or the other hand. Uh, I prefer to always go for the left hand, but again, in situations where you're in a scuffle, you're rolling around with someone, you don't have the ability to dictate which hand you get to first, and not having to switch those handcuffs when you're trying to make that initial application to me has just been very, very valuable. So uh, this is the setup of the duty belt. Let's move, or excuse me, of the tack vest. Let's move on to the duty belt. All right, guys, on to the duty belt. If you have been following this channel, um, I switched to the, I believe this is the Condor uh, version of the gunner belt. It's a molly belt that uses the uh, zero gravity uh, webbing on the back, so you're not using an underbelt. And this thing has been holding up pretty strong for about eight, nine months. I'm very, very happy with it. Uh, I am going to go ahead and take out my firearm. Guys, I have the level three uh, Safari Land holster uh, that is holding a Glock 17. This is a Gen three Glock 17. It is clear. There is nothing in the pipe and there is no magazine. Okay. This is my Glock 17 Gen 3 uh, with the TLR1 um, uh, light, rail light, as well as the whole sun um, slide optic. And this has been my absolute favorite firearm in terms of my go-to uh, duty pistol. I'm going to take this and place it off to the side. On this Condor duty belt, um, with the Safari Land uh, holster, I'm using the True North uh, drop adapter. Uh, this has been super cool. Um, I have a video on this channel um, about the uh, installation of the True North concept um, holster adapter. It's been very, very uh, stable, haven't had any issues with it. I do run a T-Rex thigh strap that goes through the bottom. Having that thigh strap just gives you a little bit more tension and retention if you're trying to draw that pistol uh, from the Safari Land holster. It keeps the holster attached to your leg. You guys are all aware of how that works. Uh, moving over in front of the holster, I have the Orpaz uh, Rapid Deployment um, MK3 holster um, and the uh, concealment canister. Uh, I'm really happy with this. One of the great things about this holster is that it hides the red can of the MK3 pepper gel. Uh, I generally wear uh, dark gloves. And so if you have to 
deploy this, um, it keeps it from drawing attention uh, from the involved person. Some people have complained that the holster itself, the locking clip will fail and that this will become an issue. I have not had any problems, uh, aside from trying to get this back on right now, I have not had any problems with this coming off um, or, or not staying attached. I'm very, very happy with it. Um, could not say enough good things about the uh, Orpaz uh, holster here. Uh, let's move over to the other side. Guys, I don't keep a lot on my duty belt. I like to try and keep my waist uh, as light as possible. I do have two uh, auxiliary magazines here. I keep them directly in the front so I can get to them quickly. And then the X26 Taser uh, in a Safari Land holster in this, again, is on my weak side. Now, you'll notice that I do have a extra uh, taser cartridge that attaches to the bottom of the X26 if you have any issues with uh, non-connection on deployment or if the first one does not take, uh, you could um, take that first cartridge out, do a quick reload, uh, and that is super convenient having that directly on the bottom of the X26, very happy with that. So uh, this is my duty belt setup. Again, uh, pretty, you know, low key, uh, everything just, um, you know, that I would possibly need and, and really nothing more. Again, utilizing that Safari Land holster, utilizing the True North Concept drop, the T-Rex thigh strap, the Orpaz uh, Rapid Deploy MK3 OC canister uh, holder, having the two extra magazines here, the X26 with the secondary cartridge that's attached to the handle. Pretty, pretty simple setup.